Well, hello, this is Philip Seagraves. Welcome back for another exciting episode in using Excel for business modeling. Today we're going to be going through a real basic simulation example using Excel to model a four-year sales projection solving for a net present value solution. We want to understand the uh, range of possible net present values in this case with some random sales numbers. All right, well, let's take a look at how that's done. Oh, hey, how you guys doing? Good to see you. All right, bye. Yep, that was me. Let's take a look at how we handle this situation. First, let's look at the real basic model with no random elements built into it at all. Let's walk through the various pieces. We have our startup cost of the business of $150,000, which when subtracted from our positive cash flows will give us our net present value when we discount these. Our selling price per unit, $35,000. Fixed cost per year of $15,000, that's shown here. Depreciation per year, which provides us a tax shield in addition to our cost of goods sold. And we have a variable cost, 75% of our revenue. Cost of capital, which is our discount rate that we'll use for comparison for our future values here that we'll receive as those cash flows. And our tax rate of 34%. So if we walk down through this, we have demand here, which in this case is 12. And as we walk down here, we're going to quickly find out that we have our revenues of $420,000 which is obviously our sales times our selling price. It's going to give us our $420,000. And we have our fixed cost of $15,000, variable cost, which as we said earlier was 75%, this value here, times our revenues. Depreciation, $10,000. Profit before tax is the sum of our revenues, and we're going to take away fixed cost, variable cost, depreciation, so 80,000, and our tax is going to be our tax rate of 34% times our profit. So that gives us our tax and our profit after tax. Profit before tax, take away the tax, and we have our profit after tax. And then, of course, we add our depreciation back because depreciation saves us some taxes, but it's not a real out-of-pocket expense. So we have to add that back in this final step to give us our net cash flow after taxes of 62,800 bucks. Same calculation all the way across. Let's go ahead and make that sales of eight. Uh-oh, that's not so good. Let's make that sales of 10. Oh, that looks pretty good. Well, what our sales department is telling us is that our sales are usually 10, and that sounds great, but they can go as low as eight and as high as 12, and it's just kind of random year to year, whether the sales are 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. So we need to determine, well, that, that's great to know, but what's it going to be next year? What's it most likely going to be over this four-year period? So we can understand if our net present value is going to be, is likely to be positive or negative, and what the chances are that it could be below a certain value or above a certain value. So let's take a look at how we might introduce some random uh, variables into this model. Now we have a new formula in here for our sales number. No longer are we simply pointing to this demand number. We have this crazy random number generator in here, which is integer, open parentheses, 8 plus 5 times a random number. Well, what in the heck is that going to do? Well, a random number, if, as you remember in Excel, is going to give us a value anywhere between 0 and 1. We're going to multiply that by 5. We're going to add 8 to it, and then we're going to strip off all the decimals. So let's see what could happen as our minimum value. The minimum value in this case is going to be almost zero. Not quite zero, but almost zero. So zero, almost zero times five is going to be zero, or practically zero, especially when we strip off the decimals. So we add that to eight, and we're going to end up with what? Eight, the minimum value that our sales department told us. Okay, now what's the maximum value? The maximum value is going to be almost one. So we're going to end up with five times almost one, which is going to be almost five. So 4.999999999999999, however high Excel goes. I'm not sure exactly the number of digits in Excel, but it's, it's pretty high. So when we get that, we're going to add that to 8. So 8 plus 4.999999999 is going to be 12.999999999 something. But what's going to happen here is this integer command is going to take away the .999. So we're going to end up with 12. 
So if you remember, we had 8 as our minimum value, 12 as our maximum value. And the way the random number calculator works is it's going to give us the same probability for each one of those values because of the distribution that we have with the random number generator. What we're going to have then, every time I hit F9, it's going to calculate values 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 using the uniform distribution of the random number generator. So let's try it a couple of times. We hit F9 there. Oh, we have a 10, 8, 10, and 9. Hit it again. 10, 11, 8, 12. Hit it again. 9, 10, 10, 11. Every time we hit it, we're going to get a different value. And if we took these values that get calculated here, now the net present value, if we click here, you're going to see how that's calculated. That uses the NPV formula in Excel. And then, of course, we have our discount rate, our cost of capital at 10%. We have our range of values in here that it's going to discount against those to come up with our net present value of this cash flow stream. And then we're going to add back, which in this case, because it's negative, we're going to subtract out the initial cost. So what we have here is our inflows and our outflow. And it's going to discount these back in today's dollars at a 10% discount rate and compare that to the negative 150,000 that we're going to put out in pocket today. So if we hit F9 a few times, we're going to see it's positive, positive, positive. Uh oh, negative. Okay. Positive, 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 positive. It looks like it's positive most of the time. Oh, there's another negative value. So sometimes this thing's going to be negative. Well, how often is it going to be negative? If we took this value, hit F9, and copied it to another sheet 100 times, as you can see here that we've done, all the way down, we can then use the functions in Excel that we've talked about before to generate our descriptive statistics to give us the mean, standard error, median mode, and so forth, the standard deviation, which we learned how to calculate mechanically in class. And there's another video on calculating standard deviation in class to help you understand it. And then we also have our confidence level. So what we know is that we have a 95% confidence that our net present value is going to be between $9,679.44 and $14,521.30. So what that means is, if you think about 95% is the whole range in the middle, so how much is below this? That's 2.5%. How much is above this? 2.5%. There's only a 2.5% chance that our net present value is going to be below $9,679. If we take a look at our distribution, this shows that calculation using the histogram function, which is also part of the, of the uh, analysis tool pack that we showed you. Histogram is one of the features. In this case, the bins have been set up as a negative value, and these bins were automatically created, appears, by Excel. We have a negative value of 15 up to a, a negative of 5, and we begin to get positive in these bins. And you can see the probabilities that each one of these that values would fall into each one of those bins. So this gets down into that range below here is only that say two and a half percent range and you can see using our our histogram it kind of gives you a picture of where we're most likely going to end up. We're going to most likely end up in this range in here. Now if you remember from your statistics classes a standard deviation on either side, in either direction, if you go one standard deviation down and one standard deviation up from the mean with a normal distribution, you're going to catch about 68% of the values. If you go two standard deviations in either direction, you're going to catch about 95% of the values. So what we've done here is determined using just some basic statistics and a basic random number generator what the chances are that we're going to make money in this scenario, what the chances are that we're going to lose money. Now we could expand this range out to determine how many standard deviations it would take to be negative, but it's looking pretty good in this case. It looks like there's only about a 2.5% chance that we'll make less than $9,600 um, as our net present value in this case of this example. Okay, well hopefully that helps you guys understand how to make these things work. I look forward to seeing you in class and as always, Take a look at these videos, watch them again and again, and hopefully this will help you guys out.